You're listening to littlepodcast.com. We're all in a simulation right now. Yeah. Val. Yes. They used to make games, right? I like that you're talking about glitches in the simulation and your broadcast is breaking up. So I've given up. I had to cancel it. $260. I, I, got, I, got, I got a house I want to buy eventually. There's a lovely morning breakfast in my house. It's, uh, it's liberating to we have not to, we give have a to shit what you though. sound like anymore. We started, started already. This is it. This is the show. Nope. Welcome so to Born in the 80s episode 283. Everyone's interrupting me because they're awful and unprofessional. I'm your host be- and professional boy reporter, John Rowe. <laughs> Joined by I'm my at Hag. I'm going to go get a bottle opener. All right. He left the and show. And, I, and I'm TJ May, and I'll get some Mountain Dew in a little bit. But All right. Can I tell you about my Why drinking I'm... of soda? I haven't had sugary drinks in so long that I can't drink them because they make me feel bad. Because yeah, that happens. You lose your tolerance for sugars. There's, I get too much sugar, and especially if I haven't eaten anything, I get really, like, like antsy feeling. Like I had too much caffeine. It's probably the caffeine as well because I'm cutting back. I just yeah. get real like jittery feeling, and I'm like, Ugh. I'm in a bad spot health wise because I'm no longer like feeling like a whole soda is way too much sugar for me, which means my tolerance is back up, which means I'm just having way too much sugar. So I have to yeah, try and I quit don't even cold drink, turkey uh, again. I don't really drink sodas as much anymore either. I, I kind of stop. I love sugar; it's my favorite food. Someday so I, when I, I live drink... in a tube and I don't have to worry about nutrition anymore, I'm just gonna yeah get my nutrients. Well, we, we we do, and live then in I'm gonna eat sugar. Well, yeah, but but... we're all in a simulation right now. Yeah, you live in a series of tubes. This this the science is too correct. Is like makes too much sense on that. Neon that we're Musk. living in a simulation. Says so. <laughs> I like the I like the uh, Elon Musk who was talking about like uh, the living in a simulation thing, and he was like. Talking about like how like he'll talk about that for like, like hours and hours and hours like, um, about it like if he gets like started on a topic, and so like he has like told all of his like workers that like uh, if he starts going on about it they have like a code sentence to say or like code word to say to get him to stop because <laughs> they're like please <laughs> you, we got you got you'll go on for hours um, on that. Um, <laughs> And we'll end up founding another company. Elon Musk is not incredible, though. Can we? Can we? Can I? Can I tell you the story about his assistant? Okay. (laughs) You didn't hear about his assistant? No. Oh. Okay. So uh, he had a um, assistant. And this is just telling it from his side of view, so I'm going to have to load a second story. Um, Professional boy recorder. Reporter. Record, it's okay. Reporter it's recorder. recorder. Okay, so this is He records article. professional boys. It's been updated probably with his... Yeah, okay. Anyway, here's the anecdote. Uh, this Ashley Vance wrote... Uh, was in Elon Musk's biography... By author Ashley Vance. According to Vance, the assistant, Mary Beth Brown, asked Musk for a significant raise after she'd been working with him for 12 years. In response, Musk told Brown to take two weeks off, during which he would assume her responsibilities and see whether or not she was critical to his success. When Brown returned, Musk said he didn't need her anymore. Musk was also told Vance that he offered Brown another position uh, at, at the company, but she never returned to the office after that. So, you know, a little cutthroat there, I'd say. Um, uh, oh, wait, yeah. here we go. So this, this is, is a, just an anecdote and a in. thing. But after some brief digging to see if I could find something else, I found a Quora posting from the verified profile of Justine Musk, an ex-wife of Elon, that says this story. Mary Beth Brown started working for Elon soon after he moved to L.A., 12 or 13 years ago. Elon and I were married then. 
Uh, Mary Brown was an exceptional, or Mary Beth Brown was an exceptional and devoted employee of Yon's and lovely to deal with on a personal level. She gave her life to the job and to her family, and the news of her departure was a shock to me. Apparently, uh, she asked for a raise. Elon told her that if she was truly critical to SpaceX, it would be, it should not be able to operate in her absence. He suggested a three-week experiment instead of two to test the hypothesis her worth. This reminds me of something similar he once said to me many years ago after I came back from a week's visit with my family in Canada, that his life had operated quite smoothly in my absence. He was letting me know that I was an incompetent house manager. He was not wrong. So, of the different stories I've heard behind her departures, this one sounds like it could be accurate. Because it sounds like something he said to me before. Yeah, so, you know, it's kind of a, a ruthless individual, I think, when it comes to that. That seems like every uh, yeah. Silicon Valley type person. Well, and when you get to that level of uh, CEO and stuff, like, you're dealing with psychopaths. Like, even the nicest ones are all psychopaths. So, mm-hmm. it's not entirely unexpected. Well, Elon Musk does say, say some stuff, though, to, to back it up. And I, I don't think he would lie about it at this point, because why would you lie about something that could be so fact-checked? So, he says, the biography is mostly correct, but also rife with errors and not independently fact-checked, despite my request you do so. He says, she was an amazing assistant for over 10 years. But as the company got more complex, the role required several specialists instead of one generalist. So he was saying he needed, like, an assistant for each arm of the business and not instead of just one general assistant. Uh, he said he gave her uh, one year of salary and stock and appreciation for contributions, and she left to join a small firm. <laughs> so, I mean, he gave her a year's salary as severance. Yeah. So, I mean... It just didn't work out. That that's good though. I, I I heard that story originally, and I was like, "Man, that's ruthless." And now it's like, "Well, not really." <laughs> she just just didn't work out. But you know, um, there's she got, uh, like, it's not like he uh, dumped her. Which thing did I? I think it was a Planet Money episode this week. From, sure. Um, interviewing somebody that was like the head of basically hiring and firing at netflix when they were coming up oh yeah Yeah, and she developed this super this like ruthless strategy that worked really well Mm -hmm. and then it happened to her when she became redundant and it's just like this is this is how silicon valley operates like you're not a family if you're not useful you they're gonna let you go yeah they had the uh, idea of we're a professional sports team not like a family you know, you yeah. got to be the best of the best, and we expect you to perform as the best. And if you don't, then, you know, we'll have to let you go. And, like, well, I think it's, like, it's – the whole thing I was, like, yelling. I was, like, this doesn't work, though. Like, when you, when you have – It works have, for uh, the company. Like, I it, don't know. It worked out for Netflix, at least. It, but it, it did. It, but, I mean, just because it works in one people. situation, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean it works all the time. Um, but like, okay. So in the instance of the, the like team, like professional sports team versus family, the problem with that is a similar problem you have to with the professional sports teams. And so this is something that happens a lot in the NBA. It's not like a huge problem, but it can be problematic or in the NFL where you'll have uh, what they call a contract year, um, uh, where a player will have be on the last year of their contract and so then they all of a sudden get way better and seem to, like, mm. be a new, whole new kind of player. And then they get signed again and then they slack off. And I feel like a lot of times if, if you treat it like a sports team, you're going to have people that go in to get referred to or get experience and then take that off to another. You know what I mean? Like, you, there's no incentive for someone yeah. to stick around. Like, if they're a really good worker, uh, they get, like, you know, you know, wowed by your benefits and all that. But then they'll be like, but I'm going to go off and run a company now because, like, I got this experience. Like, there's there's no reason for you to stick around if you're really good. Um, you know what I mean? Because you also know that the the sword of Damocles is over your neck at all the time. And if, uh, you know, they're like – and her specific situation it was they pivoted to um, uh, becoming more of a content producing company instead of a licensing mm-hmm. company. And they were like, well, she doesn't have a lot of experience with, like – 
dealing with like professional Hollywood talent and actors and stuff. So, you know, we don't need an HR person that doesn't know how to do that. And then he got rid of her. And it's like, well, that's just awful. Like, it it isn't. It, I think the culture around that isn't good because it also leads to a culture where I think people are competing with each other, you know, and you want want to be the person who isn't going to get fired. So yeah. you'll be ruthless. It, yeah, it, it, isn't it, it Jeff Bezos? Didn't he ha, doesn't he like do the corporate Darwinism type deal? I don't know what that is. I think uh, I think he has something where like the bottom X number of people in each department get fired and replaced mm-hmm. every year. Just yeah, to, something like, like that. Treat it like a, a, an evolving deal. Now I want to tell you another company that isn't in Silicon Valley that uses basically the opposite of this situation. Have you heard of a little company called Valve? Valve. Yes. They used to make games, right? Yes. No, they do. They make uh, (laughs) card games now, I think. And oh uh, yes. Yeah. MOBAs. They make hats for MOBAs now, I think. Um, They make uh, marketplaces for digital items. the way that working at Steam works is uh, it's basically like impossible to get a job there because they're very strict with who they hire. When you're hired, there's you don't really have a boss. You just get a desk, and they have like apparently like mobile desks where you can like roll around and like sit wherever you want in the building. Um, and the idea is is that you just kind of work on something you think's cool or join a team that you like, and that, and so it's basically like one giant like startup like incubator where everybody's just kind of working on the stuff that they think is cool. And like someone's like, yo, you know, I played that defense of the ancients mod. We should make like a version of that and like put it on steam. And so you start working on it and a bunch of other people thought it was cool and moved over and everyone like came together and you brought the talented people over to work on it that were interested in it and doing what they wanted to do. And it worked out. And uh, you know, they kind of, you know, you'll have people working on months and months. Or you have, like, you know, Chet. Who, was it Chet Falasek that just left? Somebody left. The writer of Half-Life <laughs> 3 left. Uh, Somebody. Fuck, I his name. Yeah. Well, that works super well but if he your was company able to, has like, infinite money. Yeah. Eric Wolpaw and Chet Falasek, yeah. Well, yeah. And the, or Mark Laidlaw. He was, the, he was the other writer. The other two had left. And so, basically, the idea is, is that you don't get fired. You just are like, well... Nobody else wants to make I, what I want to want to make here, so I'm just going to leave. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like, you know, you don't need to fire someone when that's going on. You know what I mean? Like, there isn't a... Yeah. I, I'm sure they I'm sure they have an actual corporate structure for, like, the lower level positions, you know? But, like, when you're talking about game designers and coders and stuff, they just get to kind of do whatever they want. I, for um, one, nope. am glad that I work for a company that does not, like... And do the whole ruthless sports yep. team thing. Same thing with my company <laughs> is that is that way, and, and I like I like it. Uh, We're not like very, super very... like a family business, but they started out as one, so that there's still some of that like DNA in the corporate mm-hmm. culture. Mm-hmm. Well, and let's think about it this way too: the the way that the things work. Uh, I think the the thing that I really hate is a lot of companies, and I saw this when I was looking for jobs. And I was applying for different jobs uh, a few months ago. And um, not not from the current job that I have. This job is, was a result of the search that I made. Um, but uh, no, that like people like really seem to worship the Silicon Valley HR stuff that's happened. Um, like, for instance, there was a company that I applied for that had an open office plan um, where nobody had like official desks or anything. You just kind of like have a laptop and sit down somewhere and that'll be your desk for the day. And like, I didn't like that at all. I didn't say that. And they actually specifically said that they hoped I wasn't turning the job down because of that. It wasn't just that it was the money as well. They did. They lowballed me on what I I asked for. So, (laughs) and I had other offers. So it was, it was the lowest offer I got, but like, that was a big part of it. I was like, ah, man, cause like Silicon Valley is like, Oh, we got an open office plan. Like, that's what Facebook did, so we should do it too. And, like, Facebook did that because they didn't have enough money to buy offices. They just bought, like, a warehouse where they put a bunch of desks in. And then when they got bigger, you know, things changed, of course. You know you know what I mean? It's kind of like one of those things that's like, 
And it's the same thing with the Netflix thing. It worked great for Netflix for a company that had to shift focus quickly, mm -hmm. you know, allowed them to stay lean. And, and when they shift focus, they could get rid of the dead weight. You know, it's like, well, sorry, we don't need you anymore. So, you know, that. But, like, for companies that, like, your company, it doesn't do a lot of pivoting quickly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Things, it, it, it's important to have that knowledge base that's been around for a long time, to have that wisdom, you know? And so, like, when Silicon Valley, you know, things change every five years. So it doesn't make sense to keep someone for very, for very long. But it's, it's just kind of one of those things that's, like, I hate it because people, like, worship that stuff. And it's like, no. <laughs> It's just, it isn't the way it is. What works for some companies don't work for others. What works in California doesn't work in Wisconsin. It's just a different yeah. thing. Especially when you're looking at completely different industries. Like Yeah, exactly. A tech startup is going to be different from like a, a, a store, you know? Yeah. I mean, how much of that is survivorship bias though, too? It's yeah. Just... Yeah. Yeah, like, like did, it... did Netflix flourish because of the strategy or in spite of it? Who knows? Yeah. There's People no way, way smarter than me are probably. Yeah. Did they did they survive because of the strategy, or did they survive because they invented streaming video before anyone else, and that was the future of media? Yeah, like did I they think survive they just... because Blockbuster was too dumb to buy them. Oh my god, you... man, I miss Blockbusters though. There's yeah. still a there couple of video. independently <laughs> run. Blockbusters I know there's around. family videos around. Those are great. I just miss being able to walk around and like look at stuff. Whereas, yeah. I mean, I guess you can. The thing I miss Netflix most stuff, is but... be being able to rent video games. Like I could care less about yeah. movies, but you can the rent video the ability games, to rent... but it's different. It, you know, is it like through like GameFly stuff or? GameFly works okay, but the problem with GameFly is that like when I had GameFly for a while, when I was unemployed, actually, I got GameFly. Um, for nine months when I got laid off, I had, I had GameFly yeah. and I um, it was great because you just get games. I had the one game playing. I'd play through a game and send it back and get the next one. If you put like a and this is something that I read and it was like if you put like ten games on your list, you know it it it's like the Netflix thing. It gives you the thing at the top if it's available. If it was like a new release game and you had anything but that at the top of your list, you would get something else. Uh oh, she just got somebody's call. calling. Someone needs Let's to read something. Uh, how, do you got Funko Pops? Um, so hey, 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 hey. One ring and done. You got I don't Funko know. Pops. Okay. So, so you would have to just have one game on your list at all times, and it would just send you that one. And you'd usually get a new release like two days after it came out, um, and be able to play it. But it just isn't that great. You can go to you can go to Redbox as they have games, but. I don't know. It's kind of expensive to rent games. I think it's like five dollars a day or something like that. Yeah. It's at least three a day. What is? It's at least three dollars a day on, on Redbox. I don't know. Yeah, I think it might be. I think they went up on price, but I just feel like I would be more likely to have a uh, a console if I could have like a cheap, easy way to rent games before I buy them. So I'm not gonna buy a console and then pay $60 for games. Oh, sorry. R Redbox, this is a PC World article from 2011. Okay. Because it said $2. I don't think that that's what it is now. Starting December 2nd. Oh, shit. Redbox. The price for DVDs will increase $0.30 cents to $1.50 a day. And Blu-ray will be $2 a day. Video games... We'll increase one dollar to three dollars a day. Oh, so they're two now, TJ. Okay. That's not bad though, Matt. If you don't play a single player game. I mean, you threw that into a weekend, that's six, seven bucks. Done. I mean, I'm surprised they didn't increase earlier because of how many people steal games from Redbox by using <laughs> prepaid credit cards and then yeah. basically scanning a copy like doing a paper copy of the video game, putting it back in the thing and then returning it. Yeah, yeah. That's, I can't believe that works. Like, does that right, still work? <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah, let's well, talk about uh, what John was going to say. Store, there's a GameStop store about 12 miles away from me that typically two days after a new release launch will, for some reason, have like 35 pre-owned copies of that game. 
something something if it's not Redbox stolen. It's definitely like oh. someone works in the, the Walmart and grabs some games. Yeah, hey, this brand new game. I got it used. Give me money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, let me find a better explanation of the uh, of the uh, um, living in a simulation theory. I want to find a good one of that. Let's do a let's do a science corner right now. Cool. Okay, I, I'm amped uh, up. Uh, 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 uh. All right, let's talk about living in a simulation. It's the simulation hypothesis. Um, the simulation hypothesis proposes, proposes that reality is a computer simulation, most likely a computer simulation or some sort of simulation. Um, Yes, uh, it's been a central plot device of many science fiction stories and films. Which would be really funny if it, we were in a, situ a simulation and the simulation had created people hypothesizing that they were in a simulation. But I guess that would be, you know, kind of cool to watch. Um, yeah. Here we go. Here's the they hypothesis. Create a new sim the fact that we're creating virtual reality within the simulation is also kind of ridiculous. Okay. It's it's really cool. Nick Bostrom, who, or Bostrom is a, uh, a philosopher. And let me just read his, his uh, an excerpt from his uh, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? question mark. Is it a book? Uh, it's either a book or an article that he wrote. Oh, no, it's a website. All right, so anyway, he came up with this. Many works of science fiction, as well as some forecasts by serious technologists and futurologists, predict that an enormous amounts of computing power will be available in the future. Let us suppose for a moment that these predictions are correct. One thing that later generations might do with their super powerful computers is to run detailed simulations of their forebears or of people like their forebears. Because their computers would be so powerful, they could run a great many simu simulations. Suppose that these simulated people are conscious, as they would be if simulations were sufficiently fine grained, and of a, uh, a certain quite widely accepted position of the philosophy of mind is correct, then it could be the case that the vast majority of minds like ours do not belong to the original race but rather to people simulated by advanced descendants of an original race. It is then possible to argue with, if this is the case, we would be rational to think we are likely among the simulated minds rather than the original biological ones. Therefore, if we don't think that we're currently living in a computer simulation, we're not entitled to believe that we will have descendants who could run a simulation. So it comes down to three points, basically. The fraction of human level civilizations that reach a post-human stage, that is one capable of running simulations, is very close to zero, or the fraction of post-human civilizations that are interested in running ancestor simulations are very close to zero, or the fraction of all people with our kind of experiences that are living in this simulation is a very close one. It's basically saying, if we don't think we'll be able to do a simulation, then we're not in one. But if we think it would be possible, shouldn't it have already happened? You know what I mean? It's kind yeah. of one of those things that's it, like, mm -hmm, go. Yeah. So it's basically if a simulation is possible, then the timeline will be such that like the, there will be a very small amount of time pre-simulation and an almost infinite amount of time afterward. And Correct. Just based on those that yes. ratio, the odds are we're probably in the after part. Yeah, that's, that's actually the best way of explaining it. So you're saying technology keeps getting better and better. We can be more and more like crazily uh, like talented at our ability to simulate things. If we're able to simulate things then what's the chance that we're the first people to ever come up with simulating things or we're just one of trillions of simulations that have been run by some thing. So we're, the, we're either the original or one of a billion, trillion, infinite copies. Which is more likely? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ah! And if you're going to think of a time to simulate, this is a pretty wild time to be in in all, yeah. well, all kinds III, of different baby. ways. Uh, um I I've got a counter to that. It's more of a All philosophical. Right. Sure. Um, and, and this has to do with uh, something similar in the in the same vein of uh, of philosophy. Um, if a simulation, if 
entities in a simulation become self-aware, what makes them truly different, uh, different than the sentient beings that created them? So whether or not we're in a simulation, the fact that we're even having this conversation, the fact that we're even thinking about it, puts us in a different um, puts us in a different category than just being even AI. Yeah, right. So that's like level two. Level one is, are we in a simulation? And level two is, if we are, does that even mean anything? Like, mm -hmm. assuming that we can't, if we're in a simulation and this is as real as the world's going to get and we can't get outside of it, like, it doesn't really affect anything day to day. Yeah. So we got a couple more interesting things. Uh, let's bring up, how can we test this versus... Uh, is there clues that we've seen that could point to this being true? So, so to, to test this hypothesis, um, physicist Silas Bean from the University of Bonn, now the University that of Wisconsin, is a terrific or physicist Washington, name. Seattle, yep, uh, and Zora Devoti Devoti from the University of Washington, um, under the assumption of finite com computational resources, the simulation of the universe would be performed by dividing quantum space-time into a discrete set of points. Um, oh, dear Lord, this is complicated. Let me just read this next sentence, and I'm not a physicist. In analogy, with the many simulations that lattice-gauge theorists run today to build up nuclei from the underlying theory of strong interactions known as quantum chromodynamics, several observational consequences of grid-like space-time have been studied in their work. Among proposed signatures is an anastrophe to the distribution or ultra high energy cosmic rays that if observed will be consistent with the simulation hypothesis according to these physicists so basically i think to break this down as possible is if we're in a simulation and we get deep enough into our ability to look at the world around us we should be able to find some clues that that like this is a built world and not like some sort of naturally occurring world but i mean you can push but that how would we way. know if we didn't have another universe to compare it to well yeah that that as well and the fact that well that is true but in the future we're talking a billion years in the future wouldn't we have computers that would be powerful enough to push that all the way down to simulate the randomness and entropy of the universe you know what i mean like it just yeah. it, it never I really figure goes away we're probably not only are we not in the real world, mm -hmm. we're not in the original simulation. We're like a few hundred mm -hmm. layers down in simulation at this mm -hmm. point. Um, we could even be a simulation of a simulation. Exactly. Uh, so let's talk about... Because we're making VR in this simulation. So our parents' simulation did that and got mm -hmm. more advanced. And then they were created by another civilization. It's like the, the Rick and Morty's uh, mm -hmm. battery universes. But layers of virtual reality simulations. Let's let's talk about simulations. What what happens in simulations? What happens in computers sometimes? They glitch out, right? Well, let's talk about what happened in 2016. Oh, I got I got a sound for this. Here we go. So this is just an article written by uh, Adam Gopnik for uh, TheNewYorker.com, <laughs> and he, he said, you know, with the simulation theory. Yeah, there could be glitches. Let's let's think about the election. No chance that Hillary Clinton's going to lose the election. What happens? Didn't happen. I mean, no, let's, let's let's look at the Super Bowl in 2016. I like that you're talking about glitches in the simulation and your <laughs> broadcast is breaking up. Uh, let's think. Simple. We're on to something, John. We're on to something. They don't want us to get the word exactly. out. Exactly. We're on to the Super Bowl. The, the Atlanta Falcons were up 27-3 and a half. And somehow, Blue won. That's insane. Let's talk about the World Series. Let's talk about the Cubs. John, you're, you're a little bit too robot -y. Fucking goddamn! Oh, there it. we the go. Okay, it caught up. We got it. What the got cock? It. I'm explaining here. All <laughs> right, let's talk you, about the they Super They didn't Bowl. want us to know. Twenty-seven to three, Atlanta Falcons. They lose somehow. 
How did this happen? What an upset. Nobody saw that coming. Let's talk about the World Series in 2016. The Cubs down games. Have to go back to, to Indiana to win it. or Sorry, uh, not Indiana, to uh, Ohio to beat the Indians. And what do they do? They, they come out from behind and win. Let's talk about the, let's talk about the uh, 2016 uh, NBA Finals with the, uh, the Warriors up three to one in, the, in three games to one. And who won that? Cleveland Cavaliers won that. The Cubs winning for the first time in 100 years, 103 years, I think. I mean, this is some insane shit happening right now. The, yeah. <laughs> we have the underdogs constantly winning. What's going on here? Let's let's talk about let's talk about the Oscars. Well, let's, I thought let's talk La La about Land a little, won Best Picture, little... but it was Moonlight, huh? What, how could that have happened? What about a little director that's never uh, misstepped called Kevin Smith? He had a movie yeah. in 2016 called Yoga oh, Hosers, and it was oh, terrible. No, he's misstepped <laughs> before. <laughs> he's then. never ever made a bad movie before this. Um, what's different in 2016? Let's talk about Brexit. I mean, so many insane things happened last year. Like, in, in the space of, like, one year. The simulation was like, no, we got to change things up. Let's fuck with everyone. Yeah. There is no way in a real reality Zoolander 2 would have been that bad. <laughs> I mean, have you even seen Zoolander 1? I love that movie. What happened? Why is two so bad? I don't know, but nobody saw it. Uh, yeah, so what happened was some uh, kid was like, let me fuck with this simulation for a bit. Anyway. So. But there's a lot of people yeah. that argue with this theory as well. Because it is what it is. It's a philosopher coming up with a theory. Well, it's just kind Who of knows? a filter to looking at the world. Ultimately, if you're if like our smartest people a billion years from now are able to see the yeah. matrix, for lack of a better phrase, like is that really seeing outside the simula simulation, or is it just seeing like into the multiverse or whatever? Like you can call it whatever you want. It's yeah, just however you want to interpret it, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, that's, that's it. We're not, we're not probably in a simulation, but it's possible. It's not impossible. So there is a non-zero chance that this is all correct made up. There's also a non-zero chance that our universe could exist inside of a false vacuum that could evap evaporate at the speed of light without any warning. Yeah. Sometimes you watch everything. like physics videos and stuff like that. And you're just like could just all be over in an instant <laughs> like mm -hmm. like yeah it could just happen like a gamma ray burst could happen from the sun yeah, and yep. just vaporize the earth could Nothing destroy is our certain. atmosphere like yeah which is why we're in a simulation all these things could be happening but they haven't no that that is survivorship bias yeah that's true fair, fair enough I live in 2017. I'm surviving 2017. So I have survived so far. And that's the only reason that the world hasn't been destroyed. Because yeah. the one that's been destroyed, I wouldn't be having these thoughts anymore. Yeah. And I think that we need to have a, a question about the way that we're living our lives. And it, it's nice... To think that this is a simulation that we don't have 100% control over, yeah. you know? Like, maybe that just makes the world a better place, or... Well, that's the, one of the uh, big things with, like, the mindfulness movement that's been coming around for the past couple of years. Oh, I've got another thing the about a simulation. We saw Mario's goddamn nipples. Yep. Too hot for Twitch. Too hot for mother effing Twitch. Matt, you didn't watch it, I'm assuming, but the Nintendo nope. Direct happened, and I fast-forwarded through like 40 minutes of them talking about, uh, what's that Switch game that's coming out? Tales of Poop. Mario TJ? and Rabbids? Project 
Project Octopath Traveler? No, what's the what's the RPG they talked about for like an hour? Or Cat like two Quest? Hours, the sequel? Oh, Xenoblade. Xenoblade Chronicles. Yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They like went on for like four hours about that. And I was like, I don't give a crap. I haven't the played only, the first one. The only things I even cared about from the Direct was, um, let's see, I liked uh, that Fire Emblem Warriors is getting Lynn from the first U.S. Fire Emblem game. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, Mario's Nipples. Yes. I like those. Um, yes. Uh, Project Octopath Traveler. Yeah. Like, let's take uh, let's take the branching storylines from Secret of Mana two that we never got. Make it make the graphics look like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy six put together, mixed in an actual three D environment, and then the uh, combats from Bravely Default. Really good style, and doesn't have an official name yet. Yeah. That's still just a whatever, but the demo's available. Yeah. Uh, now, I didn't see the Nintendo Direct, but I did see a wonderful Photoshop of Mario with, like, a big gold chain and lots and lots of body hair. <laughs> um, oh, Wolf and... Oh, sorry, Wolf. Doom and Wolfenstein are coming to the Switch. Yeah, the Nintendo Switch is getting Doom and Wolfenstein 2. The new Colossus. Yeah. That's pretty insane. Um, a uh, couple other things. Uh, Minecraft is going to be on the 3DS, the new Nintendo 3DS, for some reason. Yep. Well, it's not high. It's not high def Minecraft, though, right? Like, no, uh, there's it's not going to be that, awesome, that good shit. There's an awesome looking. Gonna, yep, go. It's going to be part of the Play Together uh, expansion coming out, so sure. that won't play together with everything else. So, Nintendo of America also announced the Pokeball edition of the 2DS XL, which looks awesome. Yep. It looks like a Pokeball, but like a square. Uh, that's it, really. Um, they announced the Mario Party Top 100 game, minigame thing. Yeah, it's, it's like the best 100 minigames from the, all of the console Mario Parties. Coming to the 3DS! Yeah. Yes. Why is it not coming to the Switch? What is wrong with this company? I have no freaking clue. They take, like, two years to, like, turn into the correct decision. Like, they don't pivot Kirby quickly. Went to 3DS. What? Sorry? And a Kirby Battle Royale. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not to the I'll Switch. Just... You know, the console that they can't even keep on shelves. No, the, the Switch is getting a Kirby Star Allies. Yeah, okay. Which really looks like a more enhanced version of Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Yeah. But with actual, like... Your player two, three, and four, instead of being multiple Kirby's, a lot of times are just you befriend the enemies like you did in Superstar. Yep. I like uh, a couple things about this. Um, so the Super Mario Odyssey stuff that they showed, um, Mario has nipples, so oh, oh, he oh. is a human. We, we missed the big one. What? Switch still isn't getting virtual console. But they're getting ports of Nintendo's old arcade games. Yeah, so I was going to get to that as well. Uh, so they announced the Arcade Archives is going to have Mario Brothers. That's the uh, two-player arcade game, which I have played. And then Versus Super Mario Brothers, which I have also played in arcade. And that is just Mario Brothers, where you, where you, where you have two players and you switch off over deaths. Yeah. Um, and Balloon Fight, Ice Climber, Pinball, Cuckoo Land, Punch-Out, Arcade ports not the nes game versions but arcade game ports um, but the arcade games were at least better sound and the punch out was actually better yes the punch out arcade is, is great um so it'll be interesting to see kind of how that works um i kind of can't believe that the virtual console still isn't around but uh whatever uh i can't believe it but they, they haven't done it and it doesn't seem like people have cared as much um one of the cool features about um super mario odyssey is that they have a snapshot mode where you can pause the game at any moment make lots of crazy snapshots so it sounds like nintendo has embraced the the the, the death stare luigi meme <laughs> and has been like we should allow people to have fun making shareable content with their stuff which is nice you know they're kind of pivoting towards uh 
let's be kind of fun, you know? Like, this Super Mario Odyssey seems kind of wacky, you know? So. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm excited. There's there's a lot there's a lot going on in Nintendo. Um. I I wish that they would just. It sounds like the Switch is getting a lot of stuff, and they're definitely moving towards it. And there's another bit of Nintendo news we have to talk about. Fuck the scalpers. You're going to be able to buy these consoles. Let me find. You see that? Yes. Yeah, inappropriate. Get... Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. So the uh, they announced uh, on all of their like. Uh, different like regional Twitter accounts that the NES Classic is coming back next summer. They're going to be relaunching it and producing more units. And uh, that the SNES Classic will be sold into next year. I don't know if they're going to stop selling it next year, but they definitely said we're not going to cease production in 2017. It'll be produced in 2018. But it could be the same as the, the NES Classic where they stop halfway through. But the fact that they're bringing back the NES Classic is like, okay, that wasn't a one-time deal. They just are going to be able to do it. I, I love the intent, including mm-hmm. their tweet that says, please do not buy yes. the Classic for more than seventy nine ninety nine. Uh-huh. I'm just worried about the execution. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm like kind of like, okay, good for you. I have a fucking pre-order for a $250 goddamn Mega Man garbage pack that's coming in like a week. Uh, I don't want to pay for, but can you buy a switch now? Yes. Uh, sometimes yes. Sometimes no, depending on where you're at. They still don't have that, that full, I hear people saying that they haven't been able to find them. And then I hear people saying, oh, there's 10 in this store. Yeah. <laughs> I had 10 for like a week. Yeah, I know, but it's still just not there. So I still worry. And I just, I don't know if I want to cancel my pre-order yet. I just don't know. I have, I have a used one. A used NES Classic? No Switch. So oh, I'm sorry. I'm... I'll take it. Oh but my still, god. I, 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 until the 29th happens, or I guess technically like the 27th for me for knowing it. If I don't have 60 units here on launch day, I don't trust we're going to continue to have good quantities of this product. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get freaking 15, and I'm going to have to deal with. I already had to make the schedule for that week, and we were told, hey, make sure you have an extra person in for all the phone calls. That doesn't instill me a lot of confidence. I that mean, it's not gonna be... when is the SNES Classic coming out? Friday the 29th. It's two weeks from two days ago, so 12 days from today. Okay. My pre order has unpaid, order is still open. According to Think Geeks, third party salary dot yeah. com, yeah, two hundred and sixty three dollars. Well, it, it won't charge your card until it ships, right? So, I hope. Or are they going to ship the Mega Man works. stuff and be like, "Oh, the thing's coming when we get up, get one." I would. I. I, I, I don't know helmet? what I do. No, you can pay for it. Four dollars. Nope. I honestly don't know if I'm going to cancel that or not. I really think I might, because that's a lot of money. Like, I can afford that, but do I want to pay that much money? I really, really, really want an SNES Classic. <laughs> but I, I, I think I might have to cancel it. I mean, it's just insane. Like, it, it was like I, I was like, I want one of these, but... It was the same thing happened with the NES Classic, where I was like, I'll just wait. Like, they're going to be a huge rush, and then come March 2017, they'll have, like, five or six in stock at every store, and I'll just be able to pick one up. And that didn't happen. Because I... I, Do you think Nintendo can outproduce what scalpers are willing to buy and hold on to? Like... I'm not confident. I I don't know. I mean, because cause I was thinking about this. Why don't scalpers just each buy 10 copies each and then sell them for 250 What are they going to do? Like, Nintendo doesn't give a shit because they're selling them at the cost. The only way around scalpers would be to do something like Apple does where they take orders themselves. Yeah. That's the yeah, only way around it. The and they won't do that. But... Because Nintendo isn't a company that does that. They've never done that. They sell the, they sell the retailers. 
The only things you can buy from Nintendo are refurbs. And playing cards. <laughs> or, imports. or imports, yeah. Weird shit. So, I mean, it makes sense. But it it's just so disappointing. Because it's like, I don't want to spend this money, but it was the only pre-order I could get. <sighs> I mean, at the end of the day, I really bought mine for you, John. I don't want it. All right. So, I think I'm going to cancel this. And is there... I guess it would be illegal for me to tell TJ if he gets one in stock to, to use the $80 that I have mailed him to buy it. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll talk about it after, we're, after this. I don't know if that's possible. I don't want to break any policies. And TJ isn't Hey, if to something do this. falls off the truck and you happen to well, find an saying, envelope full of money. I don't want to cheat anyone out of one of these. We'll talk later because, I mean, as much as I would love it, I don't really want it. So we'll talk. Well, well, I might be able to find one because it really does sound like they're confident in getting one. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it next spring if I still haven't been able to get one. <laughs> Maybe I can give you give you it or give you give you cash for it. Um, all right, so I'll probably cancel that because it's just a stupid amount of money for me to pay for one of these things. <laughs> Two hundred and sixty dollars. Ah, I mean it's a steal, Matt. Because that Mega Man helmet is $100, and yeah. the blaster is $100, and sweet, the sweet SNES Classic is 80 that you put so on your body. That's that's $280 worth of stuff that I'm getting for... There's, there's, there's no fucking way that blaster's 100 bucks. I swear it was 80 retail. It could be 80 I think the helmet might be like 150 though. Although, although I'm, I'm still thinking of the Mega Man blaster. This one's the Proto Man, right? I'm looking it up. Red one, right? Does it even shoot yeah, Nerf so. balls? Because if not, like, what's no, the but point? it actually looks really cool because it's huge, and, and like, it and it lights up. Lights up and sounds. Um, I'm looking through Think Geek trying to find it. It's not showing up. So, I don't even think so. Speaking of costumes, um, by the time this episode comes out, I'll be going to Madison Comic Con. And I need a cosplay that I can create in less than a week for zero dollars. Any ideas? Um, well, if you can pay for the gas, come down here. I have a gender bend Zelda. <laughs> a so Zelda? You know, Zelda? No, yeah, exactly. Zelda. Come, come take my Zelda. Come take my Zelda. Take my Zelda. I do have a child uh, Batman costume from 1992, so I might wear that. Okay, I got I, it. I have a... Oh, go ahead. The Mega Man helmet re- uh, scale replica that won't fit my giant head, but supposedly could, um, is $160. What the fuck? And the Proto Blaster... Which you can like wear, I think, full size replica of a plasma arm cannon, uh, and it lights up and it comes on a cool little stand where it, like you can sit and like glow on your desk. Like that's not the worst thing, you know. And that's eighty, so I'm practically got these for free when you think about the price. So that's eighty and one hundred and sixty, you know. Just, Wait, so just how much that. did you say the the helmet was one hundred and sixty? Yeah. It's two hundred and forty well, just for, for the Mega Man stuff. John, I have terrific news. I just checked out eBay, and yeah. uh, it appears you can sell the helmet for upwards of fifty dollars. <laughs> oh, it's the shittiest thing I've ever seen. This wearable Mega Man helmet. There are people though that are are loving it though in these yeah. in these pictures. Um, it's just like man. It's just the kind of thing that if you actually wanted it, you would just like make a friend that had a 3D printer. Yeah. God, Matt, I, I also have a uh, a child-sized Kylo Ren <laughs> that I bought from here. It was on clearance for like a buck something. And, well, honestly, I'm glad no one else bought it because every now and then here in the store, I would just wear it. And then just go all emo Kylo Ren. Does it have a voice changer? No. You just have to put it on and be like. Oh, all right, boys. 
I've canceled. Uh, I've canceled my pre-order. I heard Kylo Ren totally has the six pack. Pre-order has been canceled. They warned me that this could not be undone. So, I'm in your hands, Nintendo. I listened I'm to sure your. I'm sure they tweet. won't disappoint. I listened to your tweet, and you said, "Don't buy one for that," and I and I was, and I want and to say nin- this. Nintendo says. Think Geek was scalping these, is what they were doing. They were holding on to them and trying to get rid of a bunch of fucking giant Mega Man helmets nobody would buy. And they, they roped me in on it. I wanted to get one of the cheaper bundles that came with like a, a Tetris lamp. That looked kind of alright. I'd put that up. $170. Like, I'll, you know, I'll pay, you know, 80, 90 bucks for a, for a dumb lamp and uh, like a little uh, book about all the games. Like, that's not a terrible bundle. But I will not spend two hundred and sixty dollars on a Mega Man helmet that won't fit my giant head. So I've given up. I had to cancel it. Two hundred sixty dollars. I, I got. I got. I got a house I want to buy, eventually. I mean, two hundred sixty dollars yeah. is not really going to do a drop in the bucket for that. But I got to be responsible. <laughs> All right. Ugh. So I'll try and get one. I might be able to get one on launch day. You know, like it could just happen. I could just drive to a target on launch day i'll just go i'll just tell my boss i'm going to be into work an hour late on that day and yeah and that's uh, like when i drove to that target and got that fallout themed jones cola just like so easily yeah you never know there probably will be a giant line outside of everyone in madison for these though so this is where i pretend i actually have one in the store <laughs> but this is just a fake box just a fake box <laughs> oh my god give it to me i'll pay you 260 dollars for it for the box sure. no i want okay do you think that the ebay prices have been uh affected by this i don't think so i don't think that they are i mean the nice thing about oh no it has been affected i wonder if that was part of the uh motivation to to, to announce that is this a buy it now? Buy it now, 210. 40 bucks down. It's dropped. Oh shit though, you could buy a uh, Raspberry Pi 3 mini SNES classic retro console with controller and 60 gigabyte uh sand disk for $130. Like what? A Raspberry Pi costs like thirty dollars or forty dollars. This has got a uh, a wired PS3 controller that looks like a not official PS3 controller, so it actually looks really shitty. Um, and mm. uh, a, a, a plug-in and power cable, no HDMI cable as well. I'd like to point out, uh, and a sixty-four for one hundred and thirty dollars. This is probably $60 worth of stuff that they're trying to sell for 130 I mean, the fever is insane. Build your own. It's super easy. That sounds um, like a really shitty deal. You know what's a great an, deal, John? SNES Classic for 180 the Getting countless hours of podcasting entertainment for free. Yeah. And all you have to do in return is go to yep. iTunes and just leave us a little review. Just go ahead. Yeah. Just leave us a little review. Try and get us mm-hmm. over that, that three-star divot that we're in from the early days. There's actually a reason I brought that up in our group chat. <laughs> um, so I just... This is separate from anything that's in the doc because I started listening to even another new podcast. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, this podcast doesn't have any reviews. Let's go, let's go check ours because I haven't seen ours in a while. We haven't had a review in four years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But no reviews in four years. I think people have moved off of using iTunes for podcasts, though. I think so, well. yeah. But that's yeah. still, like, where new listeners come from in a big way. So if you can just take five seconds and leave a review. You can write something. Nobody actually reads it. So you can just, like, make up your own little haiku. Uh, but leave the review. Well, the only people that read it is me, who's insecure about myself. I was looking for recent reviews. <laughs> So I've been playing a thing. Okay. It's 
a little game called Cat Quest. Um, what the heck is Cat Quest? So this is uh, uh, I got I I've been playing it on my phone. It's four ninety nine game. Uh, it's just straight up buy it. You don't have any ads. You don't have any like free to play bullshit monetization or anything like that. Uh, and it's actually on iOS, Android, Steam, PS4, and the Switch. It's like a uh, little cat themed RPG game. It's the story is super generic, but it's got like it's like self referential. Like it's got a lot of uh, Sky Skyrim and Ocarina of Time and that sort of thing in it. But it's just uh, it's really well made and really fun to play. It's tap to move like Diablo style. Then uh, it's like super easy to play on a touch screen. You just tap the enemy as auto attacking. And then the uh, the spell casting mode is you tap your your player thing and you drag. And it, it like brings up a, a wheel of spells. And you just tap and drag in one direction or another to cast spells. Um, nice. So it's like super streamlined for the touch screen. And I highly recommend it. Five dollars, and I'm really, I really want more games to just have a straight up price tag and not have a ton of bullshit monetization. Mm-hmm. Does it work on the, work on the phone good though, like the size of the screen? Yeah, I feel like it was lot, originally designed as a phone game. Uh, it's, a lot of times, I I have problems with, uh, like when you use touch controls, like your hand covers up half the screen, you just don't feel like you. <laughs> yeah. There is some of that. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a huge problem, mm-hmm. but um, like since it's that Diablo style movement, I'll switch whether I'm tapping with my left thumb or my right thumb, depending on like what part of the screen I want to not block. Uh, but it's That's very cool, the art style well, is can you, can pretty you cartoony the and vibrant. Just Cat Quest. Cat Quest. Okay. I just want to make so it's, sure... It's, we, it's we, got a graphic style that. that really scales down to the small screen really well. Yeah. Hey, uh, TJ. Yeah. I, I don't mean to cut off Matt, but I just saw this page come up. If you want to get a Nintendo Switch and you don't have one in stock, you can certainly get one on ThinkGeek with a bundle. <laughs> you can get how a ma- Nintendo How many Mega Switch Man with, things does it come with? With uh, Breath of the Wild plus an oil canvas for $610. Oh, I want one of those things. Hold on. S- screw, screw the Think Geek bundles. You can go to GameStop and get the uh, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild bundle. Yeah. Which is three fifty nine ninety nine, which is just the system. And yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Bundle. Those bundles are okay. Um, I like those bundles. And then um, for also three fifty nine ninety nine, you can get refurbished Switch, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and the expansion pass. So. And you should get uh, Breath of the Wild Zelda because it's great. I'm also really happy I'm not watching the Packers game because it's going horribly. Um, let's see. Oh, did, you see, did you see Pubga? All time record on Steam. Most yeah. Most concurrently played game. Yeah. And yeah, I awesome. helped. <laughs> it's just called Cat Quest, Matt. It is. Well, guess what I can't buy on Android? What? Why not? Oh, wait. No, here it is. I searched Cat Quest, right? It Did it bring up the, like one, an advertisement thing? Two, three, four, five, six on the list. It's, yeah, it's the one I by searched. Gentle Bro Games. Yeah, yeah. It is not optimized. Um, I would like to mention that Castle Cats showed up way before it, and I did not use the word castle at all. <laughs> So, good well, job, Google. Google um, likes to give prominent placement to people that give them money. So, that's where that's happening. Um, so, I'm going to add this to my uh, my watch list, maybe. This only has 1,000 downloads, though, which is probably why. Yeah. Oh, it's relatively uh, new, though. Yeah, and I don't know if it came out for iOS first or what. Hmm. But uh Open it's, World RPG. Um, it the seems to be awesome. more popular amongst iOS stuff. 
Well, I'm going to add that to the old uh, watch list. $5 isn't bad, especially if you use Google Opinion Rewards, which I do on Amazon. Yeah. And when or you compare on, uh, it to Google the nine ninety nine for uh, Mario Run, and then you still had to like deal with free to play shit. It's, yeah, I it's hate a good that. Deal. Yeah. It's a good deal. Uh, hello, <laughs> computer. Yeah. Are you playing Simon? No, he's uh, leaving and using his security checkout. Oh no! People are gonna hear that, and then they're gonna figure out the tones I know the and what code. numbers it corresponds to. Of I course. I've seen a playthrough of that Watch Dogs. Is that it? The hackery thing. Uh, Watch Dogs. Yeah. Where's that park? Don't get robbed. Although I was pretty Let's hypothetical at the time, so I don't know if I remember it correctly. Bop. Don't buy fucking garbage. I'm really happy that I've canceled that pre-order. I was having a lot of anxiety about spending that much money. I just want an SNES Classic Nintendo. I'd like an NES Classic as well. How'd you do Please. it, dog? Just let me get it. I just want to buy it. That's that was anyway. Crunk. It was crunk. That was um, off the heezy for sheezy. I guess I'll celebrate by buying Destiny 2 for PS4. <laughs> I like that we're seeing TJ I have, getting yeah, to his car. People that are listening to the podcast can't see the video feed live of TJ getting into his car and leaving work. Oh, um, wrong button. <laughs> oh, no, he's muted it. That's okay. Now we really are IRL streaming. Yes, we are. We're in real life. So I could get Destiny 2 right now for forty seven ninety nine from Best Buy. Yes, you can. Oh, I might just buy it. Do you guys have an Echo? Uh, nope. No. Good, because I'm playing you through my speakers. So it's <laughs> a lot better. That's great. Oh yeah, I forgot. I, I searched Destiny too, and I forgot that you could buy it through the Blizzard app. That's I know. Weird. I know. Yeah, um, I kind of want to play it, but I also kind of don't have sixty dollars. See, this is the thing, Matt. I'd play with you, but you're not going to get it. So I got to play with no, TJ, I'm who not. I know has it. I love this angle of TJ. See, I just want to play it because I've seen like the <laughs> McElroy brothers posting about it on Twitter. But I know that they yeah, won't play with it. me. That's true. Also, they're playing so, on PS4. So, yeah. PS4. so like, I what's think the I'm going to buy the PS4 version. If I can't though, play TJ? a game with the McElroy brothers, got... like, what's the point of even getting it? But it comes with the, the PS4 version has extra strikes and everything. Yes. They get stuff early, and some stuff they didn't even ever release on the Xbox One for the first game. All right. I, pre I bought it. It's being shipped to my house. Can you buy I me a PS4? Uh, no. I might be able to I'd, get you one, though. I'd like a PSVR. And uh, if I can play Destiny 2 on PS4, that's great. Uh, so I canceled my $260 Mega Man purchase. And now I've justified spending <laughs> $50 on Destiny. I mean, like, well, I saved $260, so I might as well buy Destiny. I mean, the reviews have all been, like, really stellar. I like the first game. I've heard people just, yeah. like, losing their minds over it. I'll... So, the TJ, you and I are going to play Destiny 2 together. The only I've seen is that the, uh, the, the end game raids need to be tweaked. But other than oh. that, people but seem pretty... That's, that's typical. I want yeah. to raid so it, bad. It's a lot better than the first game, though, still. The first, the first game at launch, the raids just were not good. I really wanted to get it on PC. Um... And I'll tell you this, PlayStation, whatever you did to get the uh, the deal where it is uh, not uh, coming out for a month after, you just saved a sale. Because <laughs> uh, I would have bought it for, I would have sold it, or I would have bought it um, for PC if it was available 
when it came out on PS4. Oh, oh um, I got some. I, I Matt, have okay. yep, go. Okay, I was gonna say I have more Nintendo Switch news. Okay. It's technically a Japanese Nintendo Switch a piece of news. Okay. But it's still news nonetheless. Okay. You know, you know what's coming to Nintendo Switch this holiday in Japan? What? Fantasy Star Online 2. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. We wanted that. Which is region free, but I can't read Japan in these. Um, hey, Matt. Yeah? We talked about this on our Battleground stream, which you can watch on Twitch TV. There's a VOD, and I got to upload it to my... Twitch.tv slash Matt Hag Music, the, the, the Twitch channel about <sighs> music, I guess? So the free Twitch Prime thing you got for that, it is now 6, 9... About eighteen dollars worth of gear. The prices have spiked dramatically on the pants and balaclava. So you know how I was saying, like, oh, I could, well, yesterday when we were playing, oh, you could sell it for three ninety one. Well, today they're selling for like five fifty. It's gone up. All right. So hold what I need to, to do it, is man. just hold on to it. It's until... like the stock market, you know. Hold on to it, and cash out. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's there's going to be a point where suddenly PUBG is not, like, cool anymore. And then I'll have yeah. to sell right before that point. Yeah. I'm going to do a thing. Uh, Matt, I've been thinking about buying Apple stock. Why, like, how how do you work? even buy stock? It's really easy. Did you did you did you not know? Well, so start up no, a Scott Trade I've never account tried. or any E Trade account, and you put your bank account information on there, and then you're like, "All right, buy me stock," and they take the money out One of your bank stock, account. One stock, please. And yep, that's literally what you do. And I they would like charge you a stock. fee for trading, which I think is eight dollars flat for a trade. Um, but uh, I think Apple stock seems like a real good buy right now, as it has dipped recently. Um, it's now at like one hundred and fifty-eight. Um, do you want to know how much Apple stock has gone up in the past uh, five years? Six dollars. Negative four percent. It has gone up at least in the past year, forty dollars a share. If you go back, Holy it's just in, it's just insane. If you go back, let's see here. Uh, I don't want weekly. I want I want further back. Give me further back. One further anyway. back, please. But anyway, I've been thinking about buying stocks because yeah, if you go back. To, Midnight. Let's look at fun. let's look at five years. Okay, yeah. Apple stock was at a hundred five years ago, and now it's at one hundred and sixty. That's gone up quite a bit. Um, do you want to know if you bought a hundred shares of Apple in uh, uh, in uh, let's see here uh, two thousand a dollar thirty three a share worth. 159 now so if you would have bought a thousand dollars in apple shares you would have a hundred and sixty four thousand dollars i think instead of investing in <laughs> apple you should invest in a time machine company yeah i know right they did they, they had insane growth though after the ipod and when the iphone came out um so anyway just a thought, because they got the uh, what they they got Apple TV. They're trying to make like make it into HBO and shit, and they got like self driving cars they're working on. I don't know. It seems like it. It would be this is John's this is John's uh, t tip top stop tip top st stock tips tip top mad stop, money stock tips mad money with John. No, uh, they uh, they do well. That's about it. Um, but um, my uh, my my uh, tip top stock tip would be don't buy individual stocks. Yeah, because <laughs> it's gambling. Yeah. 
Buy market stocks. No, you're supposed to buy uh, index funds. That's Correct. what Warren Buffett said. Well, get that paper. That index funds suck. They're That's safe. Too boring. They're That's safe. That's why they're not... smart. They're they're it's true. they're smart because they're boring. Yeah. Also, I don't know anything firsthand about money, so maybe this don't. This is what take happens when you gotta get when you get thirty. Like... You gotta learn the markets. You gotta play the markets. I learned how to four hundred one k. Um, so what you want to do is buy, uh, lottery tickets, ETFs, <laughs> which is exactly what you said. Exchange traded funds. Scratchers. Buy scratchers. Buy if scratchers. you buy a million dollars worth of scratchers and you win You're $2, gonna million, win at least $2 million, that's 100% profit. Yeah. Um... So basically, you just want to buy mutual funds or stocks that are a big group of stocks because you mitigate the risk and still have a lot of the benefits. Just go to betterment.com slash born in the 80s and you'll get $5. Betterment.com. No, go go DM me and I will send you an activation link so I can get some free uh, money. Just uh, email Betterment and tell them born in the 80s sent you and that we should get a sponsorship. Hey, uh, I'm... I'm 18,000 people, and we all heard about you on Born in the 80s, so you should give them a sponsorship deal. <gasps> oh, guys, I received better dividends. They're putting them to work for me. I got four cents. Yeah. Woo! Well, I'm making I received, money. I received sound drop uh, music royalties from streaming and purchasing oh, services. Oh, shit. And I got $20. I'm going to well, retire. Got, I'm going to become a full-time musician. I got way more than that in my Patreon account. Thanks to all you guys that, that donated. Yes. We should run down the list of people who are continuing to donate with us eventually. Uh, yeah, we'll do that next week. How about that? So if you want to get in and get a shout-out, you're not. If, if you want to join again, a video call uh, and you give us money, we'll probably yep. let you do that. Again, Actually, no pressure. I, I was thinking about things along those lines. So, hashtag state of the podcast. Um, not necessarily Patreon. Did I lose you guys? No. No, you're just real quiet all of a sudden. Sorry, let me get a little louder. Um, so, um, now first of all, you know, I, I, A, I would not be opposed to like some sort of uh, monthly Google Hangout with all of our Patreon people, or gaming session, whatever you know. Yeah. So there's that. And it could be that, that like up. that stuff that's too hot to actually stream it on Twitch, so we can all be topless mm-hmm. and stuff. Exactly. Right. I get nipples out, suns out, nipples out. <laughs> easiest easiest way to to organize that is if at least all of our Patreon people um, come to Discord, but we can do it through Patreon, too. Um, yeah. If I, if I want to set up community stuff, maybe I should get a maybe I should get the, the info for the Patreon so I can log in. Yeah, um, let me just uh, change the, uh, the Patreon. It's password1, uh, capital P. Yeah. I, well, yeah, I, I think... I do, it, I do it, not want access to the financials if I can. Well, there's no way to do that, so... Okay. So I then, will... Never mind. No, I'll give you. I'll give you access. Okay. I mean, if you rob me, You'll, you know where I live. You, that'd be a dick thing to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, number two, just maybe because I want to do random poll, maybe because I want to get you know new viewers through cross connections, and whatnot. Um, but what, what, what would you guys think about um, having like a once a month having an extra person come in as a as a guest podcast host? I mean, we could do that. Yeah, that would be cool. The only uh, difficulty with that is like the time it Our takes to book stuff. guests. Like when we yeah. when when I did uh, running with scissors, there were a lot of weeks where we were like, "Oh shit, we can't. Uh, uh, we gotta find someone. We gotta find someone." But if it's yeah, and that, if it's yeah, that's why just I don't like watch yeah, if it's just a matter of sending out a thousand emails hoping to get one response, then. That's actually not that bad. I also figure maybe we start small and work our way up. We got a lot of money in the Patreon account. <laughs> so we'll offer bribes. 
It's not a significant amount of money anymore. Because right. you, you've not been pulling it out to actually pay for what you've been paying. I know, but I've also you hear been that, paying Mark for Marin? other Patreons. What's with your the money interview in fee? We got oh. cash. Yeah. Wait, wait. You, you've been paying for other Patreons with the Patreon money, and you're still getting a significant amount. Oh yeah. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we're, we, we're, we're getting sixteen dollars a month right now. I mean, we're still podcast negative in terms of hosting. Yeah. But yeah. 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 It, no, it's a thing. I bought you guys Taco Bell. That's your payment for the for the year. <laughs> Here's, uh, no, no, I'm not worried about that. John I, opening uh, up the Patreon. I still haven't uh, cashed it out, but I, I noticed that I don't have to do anything for taxes, so that's good news. I don't know how that works. IRS, oh, don't listen to don't listen to this podcast. IRS. It, it's probably if you're an IRS out. agent, you have to tell us. Yeah, you have to tell me. Um, d- you know what? Release the president's tax returns, and then we'll talk. Yeah. How about that? You get out, get at my my. Non- Don't worry, Bobby Mueller's handling money. it. That's okay. I- I've actually made enough on it, I think, to cover the website costs for the year, but not the 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 audio hosting. That's expensive. Yeah. That's twenty dollars a month. We gotta get we gotta get a little bit further to get that kind of cash, but um, I do really appreciate that those of you who donate. So feel free to keep doing it, or if you don't cancel, it's fine. For a small no donation of of you can four dollars a month. TJ tacos so many once tacos. a day. <laughs> can we talk about the new Taco Bell invention, the naked Wait. breakfast burrito. What the fuck is that? Okay, so I've already had one of the two new. Breakfast link. <laughs> wait, wait, I gotta turn you down. You got loud again. Okay, okay, go. Yeah, I've already eaten one of the two new breakfast things. Okay. Um, because they have a, um, what do they call it? A dressed egg? Yeah, so they have a dressed egg. What? Uh oh. And then they oh. have a. You're good. Uh, then they have a go as well. The naked egg taco basically. Kind of like the naked chicken chalupa, but the egg is your taco shell. Um, <laughs> Which sounds just horrible taco? to hold. Um, the dressing taco, the one in the flatbread, that one's pretty good. I really like it. I've so what's a dressed egg one. taco? What what does that even mean? Okay. Well, naked. Think for a second. Um, think for a second. Egg McMuffin. Yeah. Okay. But instead of a little sandwich-sized patty, like someone straight up fried an egg and it's in the regular circle shape and they pop the yolk because you don't want runny yolk in a uh, no in a taco so then take that egg put that in a flatbread and then add your uh, your bacon and cheese or add your sausage and cheese inside yeah. the egg and flatbread it's pretty good it's pretty good um, i will say that the 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 taco bell breakfast is not bad i have I gotten will... The the breakfast burritos multiple times and they're good. I will live on the the breakfast crunch wrap. Those things are so good. I haven't had one. Maybe I'll have to try one. You need, you need to have it. The Taco Bell is way out of my way, so it'll have yeah. to be a weekend thing. Yeah, I, I, will, I will describe it again for our listeners just to be on top of. It. So yes, the uh, Taco Bell breakfast crunch wrap, formerly the AM crunch wrap, Ooh. um, is um. They take the really wide um, tortilla, uh, the flour tortilla that they use for the regular crunch wraps. Uh, they throw in uh, two hash browns to be the crunch part instead of throwing in a uh, a corn tortilla. Yep. And then they'll throw in egg, cheese, your meat of choice, either sausage, bacon, or um, or steak. Um, sausage will be sausage patties, not the little sausage bits. And then uh, they top that off with their um, um, jalapeno mayonnaise, their quesadilla sauce. And then they wrap that all up, and it's lovely. Mm. It is a lovely morning breakfast in my mouth. TJ's uh, glowing recommendation. Yes. I had a little uh, hack the menu moment myself today. All right. Uh, A DIY hack the menu. I bought a tiny frying pan, a tiny Egg McMuffin-sized frying pan. Oh, Which nice. is either the saddest bachelor apartment accoutrement or <laughs> incredibly smart. 
because it's just about the size for a bagel sandwich. Oh. I made one. That was real good. Wait, I'll, I'll be right back. Say that. No. Uh, it's actually dirty. Otherwise, I would bring it up here and oh. show you. Oh. I Wait, have what? the I have a Nordicware egg cooker. Ooh. Egg cooker microwave. It is a little like clamshell thing. Yeah. It's it's 350. You crack an oh, I egg. Think I, I think I've put seen it in the those microwave. infomercials. No, no, it's I don't know. Maybe it is an infomercial, but it's real cheap. It's 350. My mother-in-law cr- just, my yep. mother-in-law just picked up a generic one of these for a buck. Yeah. Ah. And I just I just ate eggs of it this morning. Yeah. So the microwave one's awesome. Because, like, literally, you just spray a little Pam in there uh, so it doesn't stick. And you just crack an egg, break the yolk so you don't have a runny yolk, and then cook it for 45 seconds in the microwave to a minute. And then you just pop it out and throw it on an English muffin or a, or a bagel. It's, like, circular. It's the right, like, size for yeah. that. Same thing. I mean, you could cook it on a pan. It would probably be a better texture, I think, if you cook it in a pan. Because yeah. it would be a little bit, a little bit more. It takes a lot like longer, it. though. It yeah, forty five seconds is insane, um, and uh, yeah, you just uh, toss it in there. I usually put a little, uh, I, I squirt a little sriracha on there and a little black pepper, a little salt, and uh, forty five seconds later, I got myself an egg. So I'm here's my current on. breakfast sandwich that I'm gonna try out all this week. It's okay. uh, it's a delicious onion bagel with Ooh. a uh, a little egg patty from my tiny fry pan. And then some uh, uh, kimchi on top of that for some nice morning probiotics. And then a bunch Ooh. of hot sauce on top of that. TJ's, TJ's car is coming through now. And I'm hoping that's going to yeah. be enough to like make me not stop at the McDonald's drive through on the way to work. Because that's I, the real I, goal here. You know what? For me, though, I can't do that now because they're, like my drive to work includes zero drive throughs on the way. So I'm like saved my breakfast every day has been a fage greek yogurt not the goddamn zero percent bullshit that chobani tries to sell you with no fat in it it's like the fage you gotta get those chobani flips that's basically candy full fat yogurt if you scoop it it's like ice cream it's that thick it just Mm. comes out like and i got granola and I just do that, and I sprinkle on some dried cherries, and that's my breakfast: yogurt and granola. That so that's how I get breakfast. my probiotics. Yeah, I, I used like to be I nuts like savory for the, for the the um, Greek yogurt. Back when I don't know if they still have it, but Stonyfield Farms used to have this cream top that had like just uh, a couple inches thick layer of delicious cream on top of the Greek yogurt, and it, yeah, it was basically like eating a d- dessert for breakfast. It's good shit. I, I I like it. It's it's healthier than other breakfasts. I prefer eggs though, and like a savory breakfast. But like this is the easiest thing in the world to make. Like you literally just 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 scoop it out, throw the granola on top, put it, and close the lid of the container you do it in. Like anyway. If I was thinking when I bought that frying pan, I would have bought some, like, terrible American cheese, too. Because that's kind of the other, like, craving that brings me to the McDonald's drive through Just this, like, yeah. horrible plasticky cheese that I cannot get enough of. Yeah. I, I like... What kind of cheese do you put on a sandwich for breakfast? You don't? I usually don't put any cheese on. You're in Wisconsin. I'm- yeah. Shredded Colby Jack. That's the way to go to do it. But I, have, I do American cheese. I've got some lactose intolerance issues, and a slice of cheese would normally not be enough to trigger it, but I don't want to start my day off with cheese. That's no, just... fair enough, fair enough. That's a legit reason. Yeah. yeah. Have you killed yourself yet, not being able to have cheese? Because I will. Well, I've got. Uh, what, usually, it's like I have to eat a good amount, like a bun- a few slices of pizza or like a pint of ice cream. And for that, those special occasions, I have the little lactose chewables. Oh, well, I guess that lactate. Mm-hmm. That, that does help. You just got to have it with you. Yeah. Man, I hope I never get that because I love cheese. 
Um, okay, what else we got on the topic? Uh, we don't <laughs> got anything else. So I want to read this uh, this uh, one star comment from Amazon since we're no longer doing our Amazon show, which Lance also praised heavily. Well, Matt. maybe yeah, it'll come back up again. We need to do it's it again because I love times. that show. Um, Amazon Expedition mini uh, mini sewed. So I saw this thing pop up, and they were like, "Hey." You can get a Star Wars Advent Calendar building kit where it's like a Lego Advent Calendar and you get like tons of little figs, you know, and build little things. Pretty cool. $30. And there's three customer reviews. Um, and I want to read the one star review that exists. This is by Riddy J. And I also want to go through his review page because it's a fucking treasure. Ready J says, not buying the Star Wars Advent Calendar this year. I have closed my wallet to Disney and their biased political programming. Good thing there's plenty of other good stuff to buy. Bye bye, Disney. Nine comments. The ratio on this is surprisingly good. 11 people found this helpful. Nine comments. People saying, what is the point of this review? <laughs> I was on the fence about buying this, but when I read your review, I bought one. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. I love like to take a political stand on that. Let's let's read through Riddy J's reviews. Uh, he reviewed the Innovo light sensor and PIR motion sensing light that you plug into your uh, uh, socket. I believe it's a night light that's motion sensing. You plug into like a socket. Light stays on constantly. Terrible. That's the one star review. All right. Oni Lee Digital LED. Oni D Digital uh, LED uh, clock, projector clock. It's like a clock that you can plug your phone into. It has like big face with like the numbers on it. And that can project onto the wall all the time if you hit a button. Horrible clock. Worst at most $9. Much better options out there. One star. All right. So, you know, he's not having a good time. <laughs> let's go to let's go to his April eighth review of this year. Hefty, ultra strong blackout trash bags. Too small, complete trash. Do not fit thirteen gallon can. Complete ripoff. Thanks Amazon. Blaming Amazon for buying a hefty bag and the hefty bag not fitting his garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Amazon. I think All you right? might just not know what sizes trash cans are. I know. Two pack super shields. For LG K85. So he's got an LG Android phone. One star. Bubbles. Can't get the bubbles from the bottom of the screen. This sounds like a user error. Alright. Here we go. Another review. These are, uh, again, not verified purchase reviews. <laughs> uh, format. Blu-ray. Uh, star Wars. The Force Awakens Blu-ray. Absolutely disgusting, Disney. Not as disgusting as you laying off, dot, dot, dot. More Disney gouging. They truly are an evil corporation. No 3D? Question mark? Really? They're going to re-release later with 3D. Absolutely disgusting, Disney. Not as disgusting as you laying off you workers to replace them with H-1B visa workers, but still disgusting. <laughs> Taking Man, an immigration guy, stance in your Amazon some, review. He's got some hard reviews. He's got some hard views in his hard reviews. Uh-huh. All right, we got another uh, New Balance V3 or V4 men's training shoes. Love the V2 of these series. One star. <laughs> Love the V2 of these series. This shoe, unfortunately, is a victim of New Balance trying to save money and screw the customer. Same size shoe is tight, fits per poorly, and is way cheaper. Maybe your foot Shame got fatter. You. Shame on you, New Balance. And enjoy your extra profits on the back of your customers. This may be my last New Balance purchase. Open ellipses. Uh, all right. Wait. Wait for it. Kurt Adler Star Wars Fabriche Santa Claus dressed Yoda very nice great quality five stars <laughs> Yoda <laughs> Yoda is awesome very nice quality now I need to find the other Kurt Adler Star Wars Fabriches it's a Fabriche Santa Yoda I don't know what this is oh it's not an ornament it's just like a little standy 30 bucks 
Um, okay. Let's let's read this. I don't know what this is. R40? Do you know what R40 is? Blu-ray? Comes this right after Rush. R39. It's a Rush. Rush Oh, thing. of course he's a Rush 40th fan. anniversary of, of the debut album of Rush. Uh, one star. Corporate greed slash remaster Clockwork Angels audio. Corporate greed. Big money goes around the world. At least remaster Clockwork Angels so it doesn't sound like a YouTube video. I'll buy the pirated version when I go to Peru. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, he's going to go to Peru to buy the pirated version of this Blu-ray that costs... <laughs> well, okay. This does cost a stupid amount of money. It is $80. But, you know, for six Blu-rays. But whatever. Um, uh, we got a couple more and we'll get through the whole thing. <laughs> I can't even get through the whole thing. There's so many <laughs> reviews that are amazing. We got to go through these. All right. These are quick ones. 3D Rose Best Wife Ever coffee mug nice mug the best part is when wife is not the best wife ever i could tape over best very versatile five stars he seems like a nice guy yeah you know he seems like a nice in, guy and in, in this is great there's a lot of shoe problems early in 2014 years before he had problems with the new balance v4 the mx409 cross trainers one star new balance has jumped the shark this is a verified purchase Size 11.5. Ooh, he's got not big feet. He's got what? normal sized feet. Hey, let's yeah. let's not let's not rag on people that may have size normal or less Sorry, feet here. Sorry, I, I have the problem that my brother has, and where anyone that has sizes that aren't like 15s has tiny feet. So, sorry. Uh, well. <laughs> I'm not going to anyway. say that I've got uh, a few pairs of size eight and a half next to me. But... All right. Well, you you're, some... you're fine. I have, I wear size 14, sometimes size. Oh 15. no, these are anyway. eights. Even my running shoes are eights. You know what they say about guys with tiny feet? Yeah. It's all they have tiny socks. other parts. <laughs> I don't know. Left shoe was defective. Stitching was all bunched up inside shoe. The shoe wasn't defective was nowhere near as comfortable as my many other New Balance shoes. It is sad to see a company who had a Descent product start to make such poor quality merchandise. I'm going to have to look at another option for sneakers, but he didn't because he bought other New Balances years later. Um, yeah, well, it's not I like they a... laid off their workers for visa holders. Or, so it's or real anything. feast and famine here for this guy because it's either a one star or a five star. But back in 2011, before he was radicalized, he gave a couple three-star reviews on a Samsung 65-inch smart TV a TV stand. Very nice stand. You know, it's nice. Uh, let me read his original Star Wars trilogy Blu-ray review. Verified purchase. One. I've had it with Lucas. Star Wars can't win with this guy. He hates Lucas. Yeah. He hates <laughs> Disney. Anyway. Why? Why don't you release Star Wars on Blu-ray? Your, oh, wait, no, this isn't the Blu-ray version. This is the DVDs then, I guess. Yeah, no, it says Blu-ray. What the fuck is this guy talking about? Anyway, why don't you release Star Wars on Blu-ray? Your greed has ruined the whole Star Wars experience for me. Are you happy? Go ahead and release a new DVD version with special packaging. What the ball? This guy's trolling. Was this whole journey of years of this guy's reviews <laughs> just trolling? Because this sentence... That I'm about to say is so haunting and and so vile that this can't be correct. This has to be fake. P.S. Please add Jar Jar to the original trilogy. He's so funny. And that, that troll. But he's been on Kid Point for years. That was in that 2011. Troll went on. To become president of the United <laughs> States, John. It was in 2009 he wrote that, and he kept writing really negative political reviews to 2017. How can he legitimately like Jar Jar? I don't think he does. Is I it because Jar Jar is like a slightly racist caricature? He thinks it's funny? I, I, don't, I don't get this. What guy. if my, if anything I've seen in 2017 has taught me anything, it's that. Most people are just in it for the lulls. And if you think they're serious, they're trolling yeah, you. Yeah, you're totally and right. Sometimes, though. 
Sometimes they go so far as to elect a president just to troll you. Yeah. But anyway, maybe I'll buy the Lego advent calendar. Uh, I don't want the Star Wars one. Um, because it's got new Star Wars stuff in it and I don't like it. But I might buy the Lego City one. There's a Lego City one that has like cool like guys skiing and like a little snow blower. It looks fun. Oh, but the Star Wars one comes with some stormtroopers though. And those little fig those little minifigs are cool looking. I I, I like Star Wars. I like Legos. I'm a Lego guy. If anyone ever knows, like, they want to buy a gift for me and they don't know what to get, buy me a Lego thing. Like this Y-Wing. Looks awesome. I want it. Like this Y-Wing. Oh, man, I want Legos. I love Legos. Anyway, buy me Legos. <laughs> if you want me to like you, buy me Legos. <laughs> Donate more to the Patreon so I can buy more Legos. <laughs> I want this A-Wing Lego. <laughs> Let me have it. It's a Starfighter. Anyway, I have a I have a Tie Fighter Lego that my beautiful fiance bought for me. Look how cool it is. That's beautiful, John. I'm super proud of you for putting that together. Meow 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 meow. <laughs> meow 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 meow. It looks awesome. Anyway, sorry. Wait. I gotta show you another cool part. I'm showing you my toys now. That's where we're at. <laughs> Check this shit out. I got an Imperial Here's my officer. Porg. Oh, Look at my Imperial he officer. He's cool. I, I gotta manually adjust the focus here. He's a little cool fig. Alright. There is also... Porg, 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 porg. Also, the guy. The guy that, that shoots the Death Star thing. The man, that guy. yes. Okay, wait. Inside is the pilot. But I don't want to take him out because it's a lot of effort. <laughs> Wait, no, I got. Uh, we're on the podcast. I got to show you. This is what it's, the it people would be tune unfair to the viewers. Here, here it is. He's the little Tie Fighter guy, with the little helmet. Oh, Looks really cool. Yeah. He's got the okay, little breathing here. apparatus and stuff. Here's here's the best one. Yeah, so he can breathe in space. Um, here's the best thing though. Evil R two D two, the Imperial version. <laughs> This is an tilts. Imperial BB-8 so like, now. I don't know, Matt, because I told you. I have not watched any content. I've watched zero trailers besides that first teaser. Oh, yeah. There's I definitely want to know not... nothing going in. I've heard the term Porg, but I haven't looked at that. I'm not uh, here's going, a I'm porg. going in. Here's it. Here's a Porg. <laughs> I've closed my eyes. I'm muting. I'm muting your video. So, uh... Yeah, so TJ drove the entire podcast, <laughs> and we're ending soon. Um, I, I drove the end of the podcast. I was at work the other part. Yeah, that's true. It was like an episode of Cops, except without <laughs> a, all the people on meth. Hell yeah. So anyway, I uh, buy me Legos is the moral. Uh, you can find me on Twitter.com, John underscore danger. You can go to born in the 80s dot net. It's the website. Uh, that's where you can find us, and it's pretty cool. Uh, and you can find me at Matt Hag Music everywhere. I'm on uh, Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I occasionally get emails that my Ello page has gotten a new friend. Yeah. And I didn't even know that was still active. TJ, where can people find you? Um, mostly on a. Mostly on Twitter at May of May eighty four, because the May of May was taken. Um, find me at Twitch twitch.tv slash May of May. Hopefully, I'll actually start streaming again and not be addicted to everybody's golf. Because that's been oh yeah, I played a ton of that. So good, so good. I got my first hole in one. Um, and uh, come join our Discord by jumping into the website born in the eighties net. Click on that Discord link. Come say hi. Shoot me a message do things mm -hmm. i'm there and you get free pizza if you join prove us wrong you can't that's true guys i want to get an x-wing lego but they only have the new x-wing and i've killed the person
broken. The what? Google made something that was half-assed and broken? Uh, I need hey! Auto shade, 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 do? shade. Uh, we're live on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. It's me, Mario. I think we just got a copyright flag from what this TJ just said. This is broken. It's not even letting me change anything now. <laughs> it's just TJ, so it looks like security footage. Ba -da 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 -da. All right, I'm back. I'm just gonna go live to Twitch as well. Don't forget to switch to studio. I am on studio. Bite Industries has added the Hangout toolbox. I'm gonna use that app. That app. All right, let me upload my custom overlay. Yeah, now. See how that looks. <laughs> That's a piece of corn. Hey guys! The internet is for corn. Da 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 da. For corn. Welcome to the TJ's ass on a ladder stream. Wah, 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 wah. All right. More corn. <laughs> I hope uh, this doesn't turn into a snuff film where you fall off the ladder. Da, 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 da. Let me just... From Epanema is a girl. Epanema sandwiches. Torture corn. <laughs> Will you stop fucking with your overlay and get sound levels? I'm not fucking with it. Okay, well, professional boy reporter. Um, let me uh, go to. I'm getting my my got stuff down. Can someone buy this, please. What is it? It's the uh, it's the Samus Edition Nintendo 3DS. We had two of Nobody them. Nobody wants ones. that. Four dollars. All right, we're good, I think. Level wise, you already checked it. No, I, I'm good with my stuff. I haven't even gone to YouTube yet. Oh. Hey, guys, I didn't put the episode up yet. Yeah, what? I know. I was going to on uh, Saturday, and then I didn't. I slept in, and I played games with Matt, and my heart exploded. <laughs> oh, man. I get, I, nothing gets my heart rate going like that game. I was in, like, the top ten. And it got me going. Why? I hate it that when it doesn't put our live thing up live when it's live. Let's click this out. All right, here we go. All right, this is me talking at normal volume. Uh, Matt, go. Hey, it's Matt. This is Matt talking at Matt volume. Okay, TJ. I'm going all over the fucking place, so just turn down my volume and I'll scream. Turn down for what? It's good enough. All right, how do we sound? Okay, we sound pretty good. What episode is this? 288? 283. 283 is correct. 283. 282 is the last one. 283. I'm Miss Cleo. I used Remember to be on TV. All right, let me get the tweet. Let me get the tweet salad out, and we're going. Yeah, Bot salad. This is just chaos. Whoa. Hashtag tweet salad. So, oh, uh, 
What's up? Bye. I thought I had so much to share. But I didn't. Wait, hang on. We gotta take the bank together. I'm gonna get some sparkles. Or pig sparkles. Those, those. <laughs> yes, you have to be right. shit wasted and falling on your ass. There we go. There we go. We got this. Hashtag IRL Emmys. streams. Hashtag Emmys. Emmys. Hashtag GB versus ATL. Hashtag Rogers. Hashtag DC Public Schools. What's wrong with DC public schools? I was say, what the fuck is going on with these kids? Don Glover. Because that shows the Academy Awards. Hashtag. Good enough. You guys going up here. Hashtag. TJ's on location. I got I got eleven characters. What what should I hashtag? Um Fightling Army is too much. That's too What else is like a popular thing happening right now? Uh um, like, um what is like uh, what's going on? Oh, North Korea. <laughs> hashtag North Korea. Korea. <laughs> what's popular going on right now? What, what, what's, what are all the kids into these days? North so we got Korea. Hashtag, hashtag Rocket Boy. Hashtag Emmys 2017. Hashtag Green Bay vs. Atlanta. Hashtag Rogers. Hashtag DC Public Schools. That's from the Emmys. Hashtag Atlanta. Hashtag Don Donald Glover. Hashtag North Korea. Wait, did so. you say Donk Lover? Donald Glover. New Donk City. Don Lover. Lover. Oh, Don Lover. Okay. Oh, fuck. Uh, TJ, I got Destiny 2 here in my uh, Best Buy uh, cart. <laughs> Everyone says it's really good. Are you, yep. are you pooping? Sounds like you're pooping. Uh, Last week uh, I said it was really good. Cool. I think I did. I all right, two, the episode yet. 283. 282 was... Do you, uh, Matt, do you listen to the episodes that, that Lance and I do? No. I can tell you don't, because he said something about you on the last one. Oh, <laughs> what did he up. say? He said that he liked your music and that you were very talented. Yes, he oh, did. that's <laughs> nice. I was expecting yeah. bad things. No, I don't get Wow. That. Well, we way to throw some shade at Lance there. Well, no, Lance that's not about Lance. It's more about my own insecurities. I was expecting oh, people well, to Well, also, Lance only thing ever says back. negative things, so. But not about well, you, I, I, so you know what? That's I need to, you know what? I'm going to resubscribe to the feed so that I get those and then I see them. <laughs> Well, it would also help our download numbers. Yeah, should I just download we, every episode? I was about to say, are we off the air? How, how many? Uh, are we in the? Are we past the dozens yet? Like consistently? Wait, for what? Past the dozen of downloads? Oh yeah. Consistently? Okay. Way more than that. Nice. We're like so yeah. famous. Yeah. We're there's like Kim Kardashian. There's at least. Cheek. There's at least 12 people that listen to every episode. There are dozens of us. And I'm one of them. I'm trying to get used to hearing my own voice in case I ever have to edit anything. 